So I'm at this facility. This is a buddy of mine I've known for, wow, three decades. Gunnar Peterson. And the other day I talked about this and I talked about going into the gym or phoning it in. I don't want that. And this place gives you that feel of people, people that come in to get better. And that's what the gym's about. The gym is about just that those babies, those micro steps to get better. But they go in to get better. I'm gonna give you a lot of footage here that you're gonna, we're gonna overlay here because there's so much. I mean, look at the ceilings. Just look up for a second. Look at these ceilings here. You got jerseys everywhere. You got people that are just pushing it and, and kicking butt, but they don't phone it in. These people come in to get a little bit better. And even though they succeeded, you know, like like so many people, they become a celebrity or, or, or a pro or whatever it is. And then they're like, okay, cool, I'm done. These people aren't. These people are continuously pushing it regardless. And so uh, it's my privilege to sit down with Gunnar today and talk about not just his concept, but what he's picked up over the years about why people that push themselves continue to try to push themselves to get better every single day. And I think I'm just gonna go back to what I first told you guys. It's about life. It's not about the trophies. It's about life. And so let's get in here, man. So many people started back in the days when we were doing it. Mm -hmm. And so few continued. Or, or it was like you said, a, a flash in the pan. So what is it? What allowed, and you're around these iconic people. I got to film with Bruce Willis in 1989, oh my 1990. Right. That's my guy. Right. And, and I remember I was just this. He won that. It's called the Brass Balls Award yeah. from the Spike Network. I and remember he writes that. on it. This doesn't happen without you. And he gave you that. And he gave me the award. He gave wow. me the trophy out of his house. We're gonna get a, a video of this yeah, so you yeah, guys can see this because I remember when he when he won that. Yeah. And when I filmed with Bruce, I mean, I'm I'm this jacked guy, you know. And uh, it was uh, Death Becomes Her mm -hmm. with Meryl Streep and mm -hmm. Goldie Hawn and yep. stuff. And uh, we're out there and we're eating. There's four of us uh, guys that are like these bodyguards in the movie. And he's Samoan come guys. Out. No, no, just all like. So uh, I always me, had... Fabio, yeah, um, yeah. there was a couple other guys. Oh, it was Hair Club. Yeah, it was Hair Club. <laughs> and um, he comes out and he's like, forget that. I ain't going to my trail. I'm sitting and eating with you guys. I want to look like this. Mm -hmm. And so it was just cool, but it was it was a, a guy's guy. Total guy's guy. And I always talk about that. There was such a guy's guy. So skip the fame that he had. He was already a superstar. He, uh, skip all that personality. What was it about his work ethic? that he's still pushing it and still pushing it through his whole career. And you're around these kind of people. You're around Stallone that's 75 now and still a freak mm -hmm. in a great way to me. Yeah, me too. And and so I love work ethic from people, but I also really value the time because we've seen the next great guy come and go and it's a flash in the pan and it's a year. What change, What's the separation? How can guys do this from health and fitness to, to the movies to uh, training the most elites? How do, how do you stay in it and what have you picked up through these kind of people? It's what you said, it's the work ethic. I'm so drawn to high achievers and I don't care what field they're in. I don't care if they're lawyer, uh, maybe lawyers. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I don't care what field they're in. The people who want to get better, get better, okay, you make the money, I got it. But after the money, what is there? You want to be the best at what you do. You want to be the actor who, who breaks new ground in acting, who breaks new ground in um, other ventures, whether it's, you know, you see some guys doing energy drinks or alcohol or clothing lines. Or I just, they're always pushing. They've always got something. It's on the back burner, but then it's right up on the front burner. And then they got so many things going, they got to get a bigger stove. I want to be around those people because that keeps me fired up. I don't want to... Look, you have a kid, you understand, I'm in the kid game. I have five of them. My goal is not to be the guy who sits back and goes, that's nice that you're doing that. I want to be out there doing it with them until I can't. So I don't want to just work and, and, and like you said, phone it in and, and not be able to participate in their lives. I want to get after it in the morning so I'm ready to go for the day. Whatever my kids want to do, my wife wants to do, that's all to me. That's where your life becomes more 
full. What I like is that it is your son's birthday. Yeah. And he's here in the gym. Yeah. Now, see, I like that. I like that. Okay, this is what you do, and a lot of kids are like, eh, no, Dad, that's that's you. I'm going to do this other thing. But your son's still here, regardless of what he does for his true enjoyment, he still gets his workouts and stuff and on his birthday. It has to. They know, and that's also a great way. So we talk about when the morning, right? You, you, I get it in the morning. Then I feel like I'm, I'm going to get ahead every day. I also say a birthday. The people I know, oh, I'm not going to work out on Monday. It's my birthday. What are you talking about? Why wouldn't you set the tone for that year? We can set the tone for the year. I'll come in the day after. Go, oh, I missed a day. You can't squeeze in 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half on the day that you're going to probably do a lot of other negative, st- well, stuff that impacts you negatively, whether it's food or drink or whatever. And I don't judge that. Do what you got to do. But you could easily. We're so similar. You could easily get uh, ahead. It's just. I started when I was in. 17 doing my birthday squats, and so I, I turned 17, so I took 315 for a ride, mm-hmm. and did, uh, I think I hit 23 or 24, and then every year after that, the point was to do 315 it's for not my a, age. By, by the way, it's not original, it's Milo. Yeah, it is Milo. It's Milo. It's 100% it's Milo where I got Milo. Milo. Is calf. Um, and so we did but that but through my entire life. But run birthday. that down, how many trainers know Milo? I would think you nope. would know Milo. Wrong. I, I would disagree. And I'll tell you another one. If you look at, people talk about the, the wall space in my gym as real estate. There's a belt out here right over my office door. People go, that's like prime real estate. Who's that? And it's Milo. It's Jack LaLanne's okay. belt. Okay. Signed to me. And somebody goes, who is that? Oh. The trainer. And I go, really, who is that? I mean... You have to know your history. I'm not saying you have to. They be don't know Joe Weider. They don't correct. know Jack Lalane. Correct. They don't know. I got a Joe Mil- Weider pack there. I got a Jack Lalane. They know Sly. They know Dwayne. They, they know you. They know those people who have come through. But a lot of them don't know the history and the people who paved the way for them to yes. succeed. And you see it in sports. Like a lot of like sometimes the younger guys don't know the older guys. They may know the older guys who were great, great like marquee players. But you don't know the guy who set this record or did that i think that's important i also find you immerse yourself it becomes super fun i i got a, a couple things milo we'll, we'll put up that information for you guys but you'll understand that that's how i'm raising titan under that same principles that it. i did by the way i want that kid's delt <laughs> it looks like a bell pepper <laughs> no. you could thank mom for those but but the concept of that is is when I was 17 and I did the squats, it wasn't that I could do 17. I did more than 17, but it was, I'm gonna do this until I can't. And, and you know, we, we still do it every birthday. The point there was- That's cool. The Milo effect. Yeah. Let's raise it, raise it, baby step it. And then you talk about Jack LaLanne. I got the honor to uh, introduce him for his Lifetime Achievement Award. And wow. so you and I understand again, somebody that lived 90 years, healthy. Healthy. And, and still performing remarkable feats late in the game. Late in the game. So my question then is, with respect of these guys, Stallone and stuff, where is it that fitness comes into play that overrides money, overrides the fame? Because it seems as people today are going, health and fitness is a selfish thing. You don't need to look like that. You don't need to do that. And I try to teach them that it's life. It's so everything. why are these guys, are they so rich and famous now that they want to just work out because they want to work out? Or is there something more meaningful? No, I think, well, that's a, probably a case-by-case answer. But I would think the ones I know understand that this gives them the ability to pursue all the other things. Whether it's the money thing, whether it's the they want to walk the Great Wall of China, they want to you know trek the foothills of Everest, or whether they just want to teach their kid horseback riding, but they get older and they don't know, well, do I have the inner thigh strength and do I have, still have my equilibrium? Can I get up on a horse? And they're, they're like, if I do this all the time, I'm more likely to be able to do those other things more often and for longer. That's for me what it is. And I'm going to now full circle here as we have the trophy over here from Bruce Willis. I am here to say that I bet you, if I talk to these guys and I say, was this director your key point in your life? No. Was the money key point? No. What is it? 
it's their trainer. Gunnar Peterson is the key point because it allowed their life. And then from that life, they got to do what they got to do. And I think that's why you got the trophy and why he said, I got here. I have another one from Sly in the back, a great, a great trophy. But that just, that just one of my favorite reinforces pieces my statement. Yeah. It is that you are more important. A good trainer or somebody that understands health and fitness is a, is a bigger part of your life than, oh, he's just my trainer. Mm -hmm. and it can be for sure and it should be I mean look it's it's a transactional relationship so you have to be careful where you cross over and where you don't but when you spend that many hours side by side someone especially traveling if you're on set with them there is a relationship that develops it's more than just rep counting and, and, and mapping out exercise sequences like you're looking after how that person you're going to back that up from the shirt off filming or from the action series where he has to throw the guy down. Bruce, uh, Bruce, one of the other movies was G.I. Joe 2, and he had somewhere he had to pick up a guy and slam him. I literally had a heavy bag up here, and I would mount it on a thing, and he would grab, because I'm like, I'm all in, but I don't want you to pick me up and slam me to the ground right. like, as, a, <laughs> as a drill. But so we had a heavy bag, and it would just repeat, repeat, repeat. That shows that I'm tuned into what he has coming down the pipe in terms of the filming. I'm going to find a way to make this able uh, to be trained. And, and so, yeah, you do develop a cool relationship. But you have to be respectful of the relationship. You're never on a par with them. You can't forget who they are, not just in your gym, but who they are in the world at large. And if you lose sight of that, go out to dinner with them one time. Go. I mean, it's not. I mean, you've no, seen I it. No, I believe it. Yeah, 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 yeah you, yeah, you yeah. know what that looks like. It's literally like the Beatles, and it's crazy mania that happens. So you, you keep that respect, but you do become an integral part of their lives. I just think it's a, such a benefit to have somebody like you in someone's corner because you're setting them up, especially you. I, I just feel that as somebody that, that cares about what he really loves, you're not doing this to make ends meet that was a while ago yeah you know that was a For while sure. ago now, that's how it started yeah 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 of course started, that's how it started but it yeah. transferred into something that you want to change lives and you want to keep them healthy as long as possible so i was a, I was a fat fit. kid when i learned about this and i saw wait if i do that and then i do that and then i tacked on this and then i didn't eat that I start looking different, which means I start feeling different, which means I start carrying myself differently, which means I see myself differently, people see me differently. I want to share that. I want to tell my buddy who has, at the, back then we didn't call it body issues, but you know, I got a buddy who's concerned about his body. You go, dude, if we do this together every day at four o'clock after school, like we can, we can be both guys. Something. So then you go, I want to, to share it. That sounds like you're trying to be too altruistic. I don't, I don't mean it like that, but to just like, it's like you find something cool and you go, look what I found. That's how I feel about fitness. Look what I found. And I want to show you, tell you, and the people go, yeah, it doesn't work for me. Or I don't think, it, no, 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 it can. Because if you do it this way, here's a way. Maybe it's not the same way, but you make two or three little tweaks and changes. See, that works for you. See, you can travel to Europe and not fall off your plan. You can still have the birthday cake. Don't worry if you did three jello shots last night. You can come around from that if you do this and this and this tomorrow. And it's never insurmountable. And the body, you know better than I do, the body is so forgiving. I mean, you could be a meth head, undernourished, not sleeping, and you start making some changes and you come out of that and you go, I can turn into a physically fit, healthy, contributing member to society, to my family, to whatever. That, to me, that's super powerful. So question then, you got the most elites. Um, they must the right, be in the gym. I'm in the right zip code. I mean, yeah, in I mean, fairness, I'm yeah, in yeah, the yeah. right place for well, those you people. You put yourself there. You put yourself yeah, around correct. these people. And I've correct. seen your road. Yep. And so I can I can verify all this. You weren't given this. No, it no. wasn't handed to you. No, no. You created your life. I still you get, created it. I still wake up and come in. And so my question is, these guys, obviously they're pros, they're, they're athletes, they're in the gym here with you at least eight hours a day training mm -hmm. with weights, or is it not that extreme? Because I think working society with the thinks. No, sometimes those guys, sometimes. Explain that. Explain sometimes. how much time you're really in the gym, at, or, or in this case, how long is Stallone in here? How long was Bruce or, or these the models that are coming in, the actresses? So Sly's been with me 23 years. There were times when it was two hours a day. 
part going, going. Remember, then he's out writing, rewriting, he's directing, he's setting up camera shots. Like, that's a full time job when you write, produce, direct, star on a film. I, I mean, to me, how do you, why would you ever want to do that? But it's because you want it to be exactly right. Um, two hours a day, it's watching your food, it's weighing your food, it's measuring your stuff. Like, it's a, that's a commitment. That's the thing. I don't want to get too big. You're like, relax. I have two great <laughs> things I'll show you. Down there. <laughs> relax. Um, but, the, but the basketball guys, off-season is a different animal, right? They're going to probably do beach workouts. They might get into martial arts stuff. They go to osteopaths. They do, um, it, could any, it could be anything from flotation tanks to infrared saunas, all that. But in the gym, an hour, 70 minutes. In season, different drill. And depending on how many minutes are on the floor, the workout may be... 20 minutes, 22, 24 minutes, it may be three, four, five movements. And we're talking about the most elite individuals there is, yeah. which I love. I love, I want them to hear that because yeah. I think society thinks uh, to be Mr. Universe, you got to be in the gym five hours a day, seven days a week, no days off, all this and that. And it's like, it doesn't work that way. Well, so you have to recover. So, bodybuilding, huge misnomer. It should be called body destroying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right? 100%. Everything you're doing, you're breaking it down. It's when you walk out, when you eat, when you close your eyes, when you f find ways to relax and, and, and down to auto right parasympath parasympathetic nervous system, all that stuff. That's when your body is building. So that's the body building. Like, hang on, I'm, I'm body building. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm body building. Out there, I'm tearing it down. So you know better than everybody. I have to keep reinforcing that. What you're doing in there, yes, it's important, but what you're doing when you leave there to service what you did in there, that's where the magic happens. Mm -hmm. So are you recovering? Are you sleeping? Are you getting the nutrients? Are you getting out of cal Like the people who are constantly in a calorie deficit wondering why they're not getting any size. I'm like, I can solve that puzzle. And I suffer from that myself. As a fat kid, I, I still have that mindset. I don't want to eat too much. Money, but if I want to get bigger, I got to eat. And I fear it all the time. So it's like a, this weird little push pull. push pull. I go through it myself. And, you know, people are like, well, you could gain it and then strip it down. You're like, well, I don't think, I think those days are gone. Like off season. I don't think bodybuilders have off seasons anymore. The elites do. Okay. But the problem is. Oh, because they're only doing like the Arnold and the Olympia. That's it. Yeah. And, and But the problem is society doesn't see that. So society thinks they're just always dieting and in a deficit. And like you just said. That's body destroying. Totally. You in a deficit all year? Really? It doesn't work that way. Right. How do you come back from that? Where do? You, how do you tear it down that much and then get your body to get back trusting you to build to add? That's tough. Yeah. That's, so that's we're talking about a couple different concepts because of the guys you're working with are the NBA, the the pro athletes. I'm going to show you all the jerseys. He had to put so many jerseys. He has so many gifts here that it's the whole ceiling is filled I, got Rudy <laughs> I have Rudy today it's sitting out there I love the fact that that and so their training is I think tougher than bodybuilding and I and I've talked about this many times MMA fighters train 10 times Animals. harder Animals. than bodybuilders bodybuilding I think is technically if you're patient is the easiest of all of these things because of the fact that it's so much go in hit it don't destroy it. Just hit it, you know, tear down the body, and then go recover. What about go recover. Go recover. I think the same thing. Yeah. I think to really get that nervous system and get that heavier weights, you got to get in there. You got to hit it. But it's so much about recovery. Yeah. Where they, the athletes I'm talking about now, don't get that breakdown time because the MMA fighters have to go wrestle. Then they got to go box. Then they got to go do jiu-jitsu. Then mm -hmm. they got to do their conditioning. Then they got to do their weights. And so I keep trying to explain to people that that's actually that's the elite of elite and, and that's why the body changes differently look at the nba guys film they have their one-on-one -on -one stuff with a position specific coach they have weight room they have practice they have game and they have travel and you're traveling you're sleeping in different hotels different climates different time zones different food selection even though you can control the food I mean, chicken is chicken is chicken, fish is fish is fish. Is it really? How it was prepared, how the, the chef in New Orleans may prepare it differently than the chef <laughs> in Milwaukee, than the chef in Orlando, than the chef in uh, Epic Gold State. I mean, it's all going to be, it's a little different, a little different. I'm going to like the chicken in New Orleans. 
for sure that. Wow. I don't know that it's going to help your performance, <laughs> no. but you're going to like it. <laughs> but it's going to taste good. Yeah, for sure. So, but so there are so many variables that you're trying to control and reduce and 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 coordinate. Yeah, but you expect the guy to come out and deliver on the court, just like he did when he was at home. You know, we had a two-week home stand, and everybody got to sleep in their own bed and be around their familiar surroundings. And then you go on a two-week East Coast swing, and you hit bomb, 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 all these cities, all these changes. And traveling does break you down, and traveling does tire you out, and it mentally tires you out. And I want to jump into mental, but before that, I just, that's why I, I love you, because it is easy for me to change somebody that wants to change their physique. Mm -hmm. uh, a change of the physique is an art piece, I consider it. Yeah, for but sure. But it's very minor. Um, and most of the people I work with, you know, jobs or whatever they do, it doesn't take much to change a body. Like you said, you just change up the nutrition a little bit, you train a little harder, change up your training programs, add in some cardio, your body changes. It's tougher tenfold to me what you do. And on top of that, because they don't get the recovery that they should get. It, it, I mean, they're working their butts off and they're trying to get the recovery, but it is so much that they have to do. So how do you, with the weight training, work with these athletes and, and the celebrities like, like The Rock and stuff? And I know that he loves early mornings too, like us. But how do you work with these athletes to make them that 1% better with the, I guess, arms tied because they have to do the practice. They gotta go do their massage. They gotta go do their camera work. They gotta go do practice. They gotta, they all do. that. And they're pulled upstairs by the front office to do a PSA or to go do uh, a thing at a, at a you know, uh, boys and girls club or the, all those things. And, and everybody thinks they just go to practice for a couple hours and they go home and have the day off. You're like, that's the, that's the last thing that happens to them. Um, so I think, you, I think, like with a diet, you shoot for 100%. And you probably know you're going to end up somewhere between 80 and 90 percent, and that's that's pretty darn good. But if you go, look, I know I'm going to end up with 80 or 90 percent, so I'm not going to try that hard. Then you're probably going to end up with 60 percent, and then that's an F. Right. So that's so with those guys, you try to optimize what you can. What can I control versus what I can't control? Right. If I know I'm not going to be able to control the sleep and I'm not going to be able to control the food, I'm going to do my best to map out way ahead of time where we're training what we're training all the workouts i write i'm ocd about that i write down every workout i reserve the right to edit it because i wrote it so maybe we do it and midway through i see god he really his sleep really was shorted or god forbid he went out and you know he's playing through today and okay we'll get with the most so i may take the heavy deadlifts out if that was part of the program on an off day um and you just try to get the best you can, and then you reinforce. I used to sit in film with the Lakers too. And the first day I went, uh, Luke Walton was our head coach, and he held the film room open, and he was holding the door open the first day. And I went, and he goes, uh, we're "Going to film?" And I said, "Yeah, can I come?" And he he said, "Strength coaches don't usually come to film sessions." And I go, "I'm not the usual strength coach." And he goes, "Then come on in." And I sat in the back and I'd watch and I'd listen to, I'd ask questions from some of the assistant coach if I didn't understand from the basketball standpoint. But then I'd hear the messaging for the players that I was working with, right? And then I'm thinking, he wants this guy to move this way. He wants this guy to reinforce uh, this movement so pattern. Good. So when I'm in the gym, if I can continue pushing that message or even tie in some of my movements so that they mimic the movements on the court but under load when the guy goes on the court to do them without the load he's going to be more effective and I thought it was a logical way to do this and luckily I had a very cool coach in Luke Walton at the time and Frank Vogel after two they had no problem with my being in there I'm not trying to you know I'm not a looky loo I'm not trying to get anything out of this that that, that I shouldn't get but if that helps the greater good right if that's all for the cause let me do what i do and and that's where i think you, you got to put into that so i'm trying to optimize everything from film to weight room to you know if i can help the guys if i know this guy like cold water versus room temp i'm getting in the cold water it's going to be there and they know that i'm working for their end goal it has to be the same goal. The championship sure but then pull it back each player has their own personal goal so it's the way they move the way they 
do, you're paying attention to what the coach is saying. Hey, you got to move laterally better. So you watch it. Watch, watch a big. And, and there was one I remember specifically, and the coach said, every time you come down to the post, you curl. You're taking too long to get there. That has to be a straight across move. Stop the, he called it a banana curl. Stop the banana curl and come straight down. So when I'd work with him in the weight room, I'd do explosive lateral stuff and I'd say, don't let that foot come back here. Make it come straight across. Shorten that distance, right? And he'd go, okay, and, and I'm just reinforcing it. And then I'd say, remember what coach said, like in film? Because they all know I'm in film. And they go, oh yeah. So whether that cements it or not, at least it, it further grooves, right? It's like doing a bench press in a Smith rack. At least it's grooving the well, movement. I was going to go pattern. somewhere else. I was going to go to the point of where I talk about range of motion, and we were talking about this earlier, that, you know, I love getting down to a 12-inch box at my height. Yeah. Now, is that an extreme amount of range of motion? Sure, I don't need to power lift that deep. I don't need to technically go that deep, but I do it because I want the range of motion because in my belief, no new range of motion is anything if there's not strength there. True. I don't want to have this motion back here if I can't lift anything at that but point. But you're also doing that reverse grip <laughs> bench press. I do some crazy on stuff. On that deep, which I have that bar. I've never once thought to reverse grip that I'm down here. I'm the like, camera bar. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have it right out here, and I'm going. If I'm in there, that's gonna rip my shoulder. But you've done, like, even here naturally. Yeah. But you've done it so long, you're coming down there with whatever it is, 450, 405 pounds. And I'm going. What is he doing to his? But you can do it. So there's strength in that range of motion. Why wouldn't you perpetuate that again? And that takes us to the belief that it's these guys are still doing it. Still on at 75 is still. Still own at 75 is better than 20 year olds. You know, oh, it, yeah. it, I keep trying to teach this oh, yeah. that we talk about that everything you're teaching to these athletes is going to benefit them after how. Remember old school athletes back in the 70s and 80s, after they were done, they were broken. Done. Bodybuilders, broken. broken. And so we're trying to be like, okay, you're going to get better as an athlete, and we're going to get you in shape. But we're going to give you better range of motion, better athletic ability, so you can live a full life, so you can be still on at 75. Teach a man to fish. You're going to show him what this is, and he's going to be able to come out of the league. And and obviously the workouts are going to dial down. There's less practices that you know. There's no mandatory practice anymore. But you can you can make your fitness program. You can tailor it so that you can carry on versus just stepping out and doing nothing, going from everything to nothing. That's when it's rough on the body. You see those guys sometimes, those you know, like former, older bodybuilders, because I think once you're a bodybuilder, you kind of always want, but you see them at, at Ursa's shows or at the Arnold, and they're, some of them are just broken. Like, you just go, I can't. It crushes even, my soul. Yeah, it, 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 I feel bad because you, you gave everything you have to this sport, to this, to this job, and now you can't even enjoy any of it spending all your time back in surgeries and your back and you have to sit differently and a special yeah. cushion and like it shouldn't be that it doesn't have to be that way the gym is about getting better and it's about yeah. getting better every day and trying not to phone in it sure you have a bad workout here and there but the ultimate goal is when you're going there get into the game mode maybe you don't play pro basketball maybe you're not bruce Willis on a movie set maybe you're not any of these guys how can the average joe the person that's watching this, the kids that want to be something, how can they get, because I believe this is more important, the mindset mm -hmm. of the pro, mm -hmm. even though you're the average, you're the CPA, or you know whatever that is, how do you, what is it that you see with these people that these people need to grab onto? So they can't, you can't look, I live by this with my kids, never late, never cancel, never quit. People go, that's unrealistic, you're setting yourself you're setting your kids up for failure. I get that it's unrealistic. But if you, again, it's like the diet. If you try to hit that bar, you'll come, you'll be a little less short of it every time. So you just tell them, even if you don't have the full hour, the full two hours, or whatever your workout plan uh, dictates, do something and do it with intensity and get out. Intensity doesn't mean reckless speed it doesn't mean weights that you can't handle properly right with, with with technique but it means do it with commitment and when you're done put it down move on to the next or take the time repeat whatever again your program specifies but don't skip it do what you can do and get out there's another part 
psychologically, don't beat yourself up for what you didn't do. Like if you plan to do eight sets of squats and you only got, I only got three sets in or only got four sets in, say I got four great sets in and be done. Because it causes a stressor, right? What we feed ourselves here is the same as what we feed ourselves here. It's a stressor to just beat yourself up for the four you didn't get. Right. Give yourself credit for the ones you got. And then say to my, say to yourself, next time I go, I'm going to do better. I got, I've got more to give next time. And then find a way to put that atop your priority list. In fact, the word priority, if you look it up, should be a singular. It should, it's one priority. You can't have priorities. It that's, doesn't make sense because you're prioritizing, so it should be that one Pinnacle thing. Pinnacle time. Yeah. So use that. And say, and, and always try to grow, like you said, a little bit better, a little bit better. Try to grow off of each workout. It doesn't mean more weight. It doesn't mean more time, right? There's so many variables to tweak, so many permutations, time, you know, rest between sets, uh, how much fuel you had going in, how much you fuel after, how much. Okay, maybe today is not the day where you get your biggest, nastiest workout Let's in. take an example. Can you give me an example of... Say, uh, when Stallone was doing this last Creed or something, and, and they were filming and filming, but he still wanted to get a workout in with you. Was there ever a time that he came in, and I just use him because I think he's a pinnacle to me. Totally. For someone that's lived a full totally. full life. Um, where he did a night shoot, and he had to come in, and he still tried to get a workout with you, but it just wasn't there. And of course, having you here is a benefit, because you're gonna govern it and go, listen, you don't have that much in the tank today. So let's just do this, this, and this. But has he ever had those days? Yeah, he filmed, um, I was with him on Rocky Balboa, right, the sixth installment of the original Rocky series. We're in Vegas. I don't think he directed the film, but he definitely has a hand in how it all comes out. And he has such great vision, and, and especially when it comes to fight scenes. So it was more like, when can we get to work at it? He was never gonna miss it. and. It might be the morning, might be before shooting, maybe he's not there for the first couple shots, maybe he's there late, and it's just gonna be wherever it is, let's get it, let's get this done. He was doing a movie in town, this is years ago, he was filming downtown, so I'm in my gym, and I'd get a text, or maybe it was even a call back then, I don't remember, and uh, <laughs> from, from We're like old school. his right hand guy who would say, a slice on his way to you. And I always knew there was a break in his day, and he would drive from downtown, knock out a workout, and then go back and finish the shooting. So people go, that's crazy, that's, you don't have to stress yourself. That's OCD, wait, that's too much. Just is it or is it off. commitment? I it, think it's let's commitment. Let's just pick a word, and then let the word color what it is. Don't say that it's this, you're so putting a you negative that word that to it. identifies the individual? Totally, 100%. Yeah, 100%. So when it comes to words for you being a father and teaching five kids, uh, what are the words that you go, no, nah, we don't do that here. That's not, not in the house. Late, cancel, quit. We don't play that game. And no disrespect. You don't disrespect. You don't disrespect your sibling. You don't disrespect your teacher. You don't disrespect your mother. You can try to disrespect me. That's going to end bad. But those are just tenets of life that you live by. What would you tell somebody that wants to get there. Like they're sitting going, I'm on the couch, I'm eating Doritos, I'm watching this video. Don't eat and I'm like, what you, what <laughs> you know what I mean. Nothing against Doritos, but come on, you make better choices. <laughs> I'm so old school. <laughs> yeah. I just, um, but uh, tomorrow, I'll, I'll do the workout tomorrow. How can you get them excited Go about life? Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Go now. Just put it down. Whatever you're doing. Well, yeah, but I got my buddy coming in 30 minutes. Okay, so in 30 minutes, let me see 30 minutes. Can I do. 50 push-ups, 100 body weight squats, 100 crunches, and 50 supermans. Can I get that done here? Can I break that down? Sets of 10, 10, 10, or sets of 10, 10, 20, 10, however, whatever I'm gonna map that out, I don't have to leave the house. I can do that right here. That's a game. That's it, and I can do this, and my buddy comes up like, bro, you're all sweaty. I just had to get that done before you got here. Now. Where does that lead me from a hypertrophy standpoint? Probably nowhere. From a conditioning standpoint, maybe something. But from a mindset standpoint, I just defeated the beast. I just, I just won that round. Look, at the end of the day, father time's winning. Yeah. For, for everybody. Yep. Hey, don't shoot the messenger. Yep. He's winning the bout. But I can take some of the rounds before I get that KO in the end. 
why wouldn't I win those? I'm not just going to phone it in. I'm going to bring it every day. Going back to your statement earlier about, you know, your, your buddy's coming over in 30 minutes, you can get a little something in. I had a guy message me, and he was 400 pounds, and when he messaged me, he was down to 200. And he says, I saw you on Battle Dome, and I said, tomorrow I'm going to go to the gym. And he gave this whole scenario about, he started and kept watching the TV show. How powerful and halfway through the show, he goes, forget tomorrow. And he started prepping meals. And by the end of the show, he goes, forget that. He was down doing crunches. And then that set up whatever happened there and that avalanche of mindset. And he lost 200 pounds. Yeah. And that's just me. I was like, that's the coolest story I've ever heard. That, that makes me want to be a trainer more. That makes me want to learn more about my craft, my field, the world of exercise, even some nutrition, although I would send that to somebody more qualified than I am. And I feel Golia. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Golia plug. Uh, but, but that makes me want to be so, want to have as much knowledge as I, as I can about this to inspire and, and fire up the next person coming down the pipe like that guy. I hope I made this clear today's interview is that the reason I talked about the athletes and, and the people that you worked with and the Stallones and all these people that you're going to see when I show you this entourage of, of people you've worked with and been around, it's not the money that makes them this way. It's no not their fame that makes them this way. Uh -uh. It's their mindsets yep. of what they want to do and the choices they make. Mm -hmm. And if you guys can't comprehend that at home, man, this is a waste of your time because it is, like he said, the trainers are given, the nutrition was given for this show. You're set up, and they're probably getting a per diem for being on the show, and a person walks out. Neither of us are saying this is easy, correct? For sure it's not easy, but you make a decision. I What's the decision. option? Yeah, the, the other side is definitely worse. The, the decision to not do this on a regular, consistent, mapped out basis is worse. I'm moving to Nashville at the end of the month. My wife's flying with our daughter and her little dog, and I have some big dogs. I have a two. I, I have a dog that weighs more than you. Yeah. I have a 278 pound Mastiff. Um, I love the photos of those two. He's a beast. So, I mean, I have him as a service dog, but that's a tough sell on an airplane. <laughs> like, excuse me. So I'm going to drive him. And my older kids are driving with me, uh, my older boys and my, my six-year-old. And I said, here's how it's going to go. My one said, Dad, we don't even have a plan. Like, what are we doing? And I said, we're going to hit Waze. We're going to put the address of the house. We're going to start driving. He's like, oh, Dad, that's it. So I said, here's the plan. We're going to drive till we're tired. We're not going to drive at night. We're going to find a hotel with online. You're in the navigator seat. We're going to park whatever. Next day, I'm going to get up and find a gym Whoever wants to go with me can go. Whoever doesn't stays here and is responsible for the little guy and the dogs until daddy gets back. It's a loose plan. It will shape shift along the way, but it's a plan and you can bet it's gonna go down like that. The workouts night might not be, there will probably be no PRs. There might not be, you know, fire and brimstone and hell water, but I'm getting something done every day because then I'm gonna be in that car or in that car driving the rest of the way, if I don't have that as the cornerstone of my road trip, it's a fail. I will arrive there, feel terrible, look terrible, not be able to be the guy that my wife and kids need. So why wouldn't I map that out? And that's the metaphor for life right there. I mean, it's just, it's a short plan for you, but it's for them at home. Yeah. It's the next 10 years. Just start, make a loose plan mm -hmm. and start in. Stop looking for something. I'll start training tomorrow because I have more time. I stop, I'll start training next week because it's a Monday. Stop looking and just start. Well, so uh, there are no fitness, I don't want to quote myself, there are no fitness anniversaries. No one cares when you started. I'm going to start after my 30th birthday. I'm going to start on January 1st. Very I'm going to start on Monday. No one cares, but it's so uninteresting. Oh, tell me when you started training. I don't know, a long time ago. What day was it? Oh, I waited till the temperature in the room. <laughs> Shut up. Just start. What are you waiting on? No one, it, really, it's not interesting. Mm. It's not interesting. Just go now, get something done, start logging it. Unless, 
we're going to go out here and unless they do it right now as they watch us talk today and they started their fitness hit pause. Then, then it's awesome hit pause <laughs> hit pause go do it come back I love how it. cool is that that's Thanks. you have that to do to, well the game was on pause the game go do it there was a fight oh, oh i know i watched it pause the fight get uh, started or know that there's a fight get it done earlier so you're home in time to watch it live or watch the fight like I do and jump on the cardio at the same time. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's different. That's it. So we got Jack LaLanne here. You guys have to know who that is. We got the rock above that. We got Arnold right here. And then we got Sylvester Stallone back here. And this is just some of the stuff. But man, this place is a plethora of who's who in Hollywood that put in the work in the gym as well as on the screens or in the games um and so for me it was cool to see all these kind of individuals and who he's put himself around this is what anybody can do anybody can do this if you put your mind to it he didn't get this today this has been three decades of building up to the level that he's at but again man this is this is what life is about so for all of you that are sitting on the couch today, I hope this hyped you up so much and got you so pumped to go, I'm gonna create a life like Gunnar Peterson. And I'm gonna create a, a circle around me. I'm gonna create a family around me and put in those protocols that he already talked about. I'll see you guys next week.